Hello and welcome to this Kickstarter unboxing review for Reaper Miniatures Bones 5 Escape from Pizza Dungeon Expansion Set Dungeon Dwellers. This is the first of many expansions and options we'll be reviewing from this Kickstarter. If you haven't seen my review of the core set, links will be available in a playlist on my channel in the description and in the cards on the screen, which you may be seeing now. I recommend watching that video first for the explainer on the point system works, but I won't be bombarding with that information during this video and it will only come up at the end. Also, you don't actually have to watch these in any particular order. As a reminder, all the figures shown today will be fully assembled and if you like what you see, they are still available at Kickstarter prices, but only for a limited time. The Bones 5.5 Pledge Manager is closing soon. Visit ReaperMiniatures.com, not a sponsor, for further details. Links will be in the description. A collection of fantasy miniatures dwelling in the dark dungeons of your imagination. It's a bit presumptuous of what I think about, but okay. This is a $50 option for the Bones 5 Kickstarter devoted to classic fantasy creatures and characters. You may feel that a lot of the miniatures featured today all seem very familiar. That's because this set is an expansion on Reaper's classic metal Dungeon Dwellers line. As a result, around 60% of the miniatures in this set are recasts meaning that there is an older Bones model that looks exactly the same, just cast in a different material. Of these figures, three of them, to my knowledge, also happen to be released ahead of the Kickstarter fulfillment as promotions in the store for spending over $40. Because of that, this is the only time in this entire Kickstarter where I actually ended up already owning something that they sent me. As I managed to pick up two of those three promotional figures. This first group of miniatures that we'll be taking a look at are what I would collectively refer to as the characters. These are all the in PC or PC miniatures consisting of the usual suspects humans, elves, halflings, dwarves, that sort. There are 19 of these figures in total included in the dungeon dweller set, meaning they make up roughly 39% of the set. And of these 19 minis, roughly 17 or so, as far as I can tell, are recasts of older Reaper models. These first three also happen to be the pre-releases. Well, first we have the Traveling Monk. I actually painted a pre-release of him. For such a simple figure, he still has a lot going on. All the heavy tome he has and how you can make out the individual page lines within. I'm not a huge fan of the cross dangling from his belt though. It's a little too real world religion-y up in my fantasy setting. But hey, maybe a Christian monk is exactly what you needed. Next we have an elven wizard. I don't notice much quality difference between the two models. The Kickstarter one is just a little darker, I guess. But both versions have this beautiful floral engraving on the cloak here. And I was wary of painting the one I had previously, but now that I have two, I can practice on the old one and refine it to make a good paint job on the new one. Perhaps I can vary the colors and come up with two unique schemes. The final pre-release was this lady with a grappling hook. Now, I can't recall nor find her name, but I believe that she was meant to be some type of rogue. Personally, I think she might make a better hireling, or perhaps a very intrepid bandit. 
Imagine, she works for the party, helping them traverse difficult terrain, or she sits overhead, hidden in the tree canopy, waiting to swoop in and snatch up some goodies right out the back of your cart. Either way, sounds like the making of a memorable character to me. Next up, we have a couple of plague doctors. And it looks like they have the right idea for our times, but let's see if it helps them out in our fantasy session. Actually, it probably would. Disease was rampant in the old days. Alchemists, wizards, rogues, clerics, plague priests, whatever your application for these, they would definitely make for an iconic looking character. Oh look, a wandering wizard. Who better to conjure up a fellowship of folks to dive two dungeons deep in search of recovering a long lost treasure. Well, I'm not seeing any fireworks, but perhaps he's more of a fireball sort of fellow. At any rate, a wizard might could use her sword. It is a bit bendy though. She might want to get that reforged. But what if the baddies keep their distance? Well, then they're gonna need his bow. This dynamically posed elven ranger looks like he's getting ready to put an arrow right between the eyes of the nearest goblin. But what if something bigger Batter and meaner comes along. Well, then they're going to need his axe. This dwarf looks like he's ready to sprint dangerously over a short distance and embed his axe right into an orc's nervous system. It's not the most detailed model of a dwarf, but we don't get too many in this Kickstarter. So in some ways, his simplicity makes him one of the best. All right, all right. Skillful fighters are a great thing to have, yes. But what if you need someone to travel unseen, to share the load, or be an expert burglar? Well, that's concerning halflings, that is. And this trio bows to no one. You have the clever rogue, the trusty porter, who happens to be carrying all the essentials that a person could need. Pots, pans, torches fine salts in case you want to make any roast chicken and the curious thief I wonder what he's got in that bag hands is no fish bones common teeth what shows bit bat wing sharp tongue a knife uh, no uh, string or nothing whatever it is seems to be very precious to him based on the way he's holding it you know when they all stand together like that they sure do look like a nice band of uh, seven companions. Moving on, we have a trio of noble fighters. The first lady is Sister Aelin. She looks like she takes her vows very seriously. I like the shield she's holding. It's an interesting design that stands out from the rest of the more plain shields. The symbol on it also resembles the medallion hanging down from her cloak. So, perhaps this is the symbol of whatever god she's devoted herself to. Or maybe it just looks cool. I'm not up to date on my D&D deity iconography, so if this does look like something I'm supposed to know, uh, oops. The kingly one with the edged warhammer looks like he's no stranger to the adventuring life. Perhaps that symbol on his shield represents a noble kingdom, or maybe he's a cleric or a paladin to a devout order. Either way, it's nice to have a veteran fighter in the ranks. Yeah, this fellow looks like he'd be at home in a pitch battle or in a lofty keep. The shield sure seems familiar though. Man. It is still pretty plain. But hey, sometimes all you need is just a good, reliable soldier. Of course, in other times, what you really need is someone who will just get in there and go berserk. And that's where these two barbarians come in. I wouldn't personally mess with anyone who could hold a sword that big in one hand and hold another sword in the other. 
But I guess some of my fellow goblins just have a death wish or something. I mean, that face, it's pretty intense. Now this next lady may not be gritting her teeth like the other guy, but she clearly doesn't think anyone is going to come close to laying a hit on her. I mean, why else would either of these two wear such scant armor? Sure, she might be ready to rumble, but is she ready to bundle? Because those legs are going to get real cold if she's not keeping things moving out in our more wintry environments. But I guess that's the least of one's concerns when you're delving into a dungeon. Although caves do get pretty cold. Speaking of dungeons, well, they don't commission themselves. Usually there's a great villain behind them. It's a good thing these two were included in. We have here a vampiress. She doesn't appear to be armed, but with her powers and an army of thralls under her command, I doubt she really needs to be. I love the texture on this flowing gown as it bunches up at her feet, as well as the collar that just screams, hey, I'm a vampire, couldn't you tell? Speaking of subtlety, we also have an evil sorcerer in attendance. You can tell he's evil because of the skull. He's based on some classic fantasy TTRPG artwork, and he's captured in the process of casting some kind of arcane spell attack. I love that the shape of it is fairly ambiguous. It could be any number of missile or blasting spells. And with that, we've found ourselves at the end of this character's arc, or the rounding up of all the NPCs and PCs. I joked on a few of the sculpts, but overall I think these are all excellent. And it's a great selection of minis to have if you're starting out on your D&D adventure. It's a bummer if you end up with a bunch of duplicates because you already own these in metal. But hey, maybe these could be gifts to a friend. Or maybe you could just paint them to be a little bit different than the other. Someone who doesn't really have that problem, I think this is a very well-rounded selection. And I'm very, very glad that I picked it up. This is where that $50 value is for me. Ah, goblins. What's a dungeon without goblins? Boring, that's what I'd say. This here selection of goblins is made up of and inspired by some of Reaper's older designs. You have a few marksmen. Goblins don't tend to fare well against large folk up close. Speaking of which, I really like the pose of this crossbowman. Goblins would probably more than often be coming up against foes that are taller than them, so aiming more upward would be more in line with how they'd actually fight. For some reason, this just doesn't get shown in a lot of figures. Anyway, you also have a mix of melee fighters who can go in and finish off whoever survives all the layer traps and the peppering from these comrades. They are reasonably well armed and armored on a few. Overall, goblins kind of take what they can get. Life can't be easy when these adventurers are constantly raiding your dungeons. One thing about this band is that they're not quite to scale of some of Reaper's other goblin models. This is then next to the goblins of the core set. Check out the video in the top right corner or in the description to see the rest of that troop if you haven't already. There's definitely a size difference, but they're goblins. It's fine. Sneaking around on foot is great and all, but sometimes you just have a need for speed. These goblin wolf riders fulfill that crucial cavalry component to any goblin force. Sure, they're no horse, but wolves can get to pretty high speeds. And actually, these wolves are pretty big. They may not be your regular wolf variety. My favorite of this two is the one who looks like he's barely holding on. It looks like he's trying to go for a record at a rodeo. Now if you take these goblins off the wolves or don't glue them in the first place, then you also end up with two more wolves to play with. 
I guess it makes up for only getting two wolves in the core set. Though those were undead. Well, it's not the biggest horde, but it gets the job done. And this group can pair well with the next group of dungeon dwellers. Orcs. They're one of those fantasy staples where if you're making a TTRPG starter pack like this one, you don't include them. I really have to wonder exactly what you thought was a more standard enemy. You still try to cover all your bases. You even have an archer. Like this. We don't get enough archer orc minis. You also have this unicorn horns big axe barbarian here. You wouldn't want to get a headbutt from him. I really like the ragged and weathered look of all these figures. It could be great orc raiders for your party to encounter, yes, but they also look like they'd make great PCs or NPCs. Also, this guy's face and attire remind me of some of the goblins from Labyrinth. And they're the right size, too. I'd take these over a Warhammer Fantasy Orc any day. Those guys are just a little too small. All in all, I think this is uh, my new favorite little group of orcs. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You can never have too many kobolds. These might not be as plentiful as in the corset, but I think they have a better variety of makeshift looking arms. Like this stick with a knife taped to it as a spear. And that shield ain't exactly adamantine. The best part of this group though is that they actually have a slinger. You know, in the original D&D lore, kobolds are actually too small to use bows, crossbows, and that's why they're always depicted with slings. I feel like it doesn't make a ton of sense seeing as the kobolds could just make bows or crossbows that are their size. But it's good to finally have that slinger. Once again, the Reaper kobolds really vary in size. I've got the ones from this set lined up against some from the core set as well as a few others that they've sold. Overall, it's not really a big deal, and kobolds are so small that you wouldn't really notice it, but the differences are there. Oh, they have a cave troll. Yeah, this next group of miniatures is made up of all the monsters and other things you might find in a dungeon. This cave troll is very different from Reaper's other troll designs. It seems like they're going more for the standard 5th edition troll look. Because of that, it's in line with the other trolls found in the core set. But also means it suffers from the same issue of being maybe a little small. Here it is next to a troll from the core set. And... A WizKids Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Troll. Ugh, that was a mouthful. Oh yeah, and Sir Forescale is there too. The base is still a large model size base, so even if the troll itself isn't all that tall, the mini can still be used as a large model troll. Trolls aren't the only things down here though. We have a succubus. Too much going on with this mini, though the texture on the wings is pretty nice. Her pose is just that, you know, standard kind of seductress pose. And an undead soldier. I actually really look forward to getting this mini. I just really liked his overall vibe. Seems like he'd fit in in a lot of situations for me. This Kickstarter did supply a few succubi and incubi to compare this one to, and I did pick them up. So you're going to have to wait and see how that looks in that upcoming video. Last up, we have this ogre, who I guess could also double as an orog orc. He's pretty big, but not too huge. Here he is painted up on the box art there. I love all the little bits of pelt and scavenged gear that's 
strap to this guy and the wood grain on the club looks really nice the skulls may be a little big for people's heads but as long as you get the point across this is a great variety of starter foes for your players to encounter i'm very pleased with all these skulls and look forward to painting and using them in games to come we've got a couple of random little pieces in this set too like this treasure pile Maybe it's not a mountain of gold, but it's still treasure. Very useful. It's a really good incentive piece, and you're going to want to make sure it's well guarded. We play at we stop at night. Where the rats? I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. Let's see what kind of troll we can get ourselves into. That was weird. Moving on. I have a soft spot for owl bears. An owl bear was the first mini I ever painted. And you can check that out in the video up in the top right corner. They're also the first monster my original D&D &D party ever fought. So it's really nice to add another one to my collection. And I'm a big fan of this one. This owlbear here is a very chunky boy. And he actually has some proper wings. Uh, those aren't going to get him off the ground. But not all wings are for flight. This is one of the best owl bear minis I've ever come across, and for me, this is the best mini of this entire Dungeon Dwellers set. Alright, you've seen this mini in the background. It's the premiere mini of the set. Here he comes. It's... The Treasure Dragon. No, oh, it's a bit smaller than I was expecting. Yeah, so this dragon isn't super huge, but he is still really cool. To me, he looks like he would fit best as a red dragon, as depicted in the box art. But he'd be a good stand-in for any number of wormlings, except maybe the nose horn blue ones. The treasure pile really is the core feature of this figure, and it's exceptionally well done. I can make out individual coins, rings, chests. The, the detail that this bones black material is able to capture is bar none. With kids, you just don't have anything on these guys. As detailed as this treasure pile is, I can see some concerns about mobility moving this around might look a little odd but at the end of the day i don't think that really matters as much as quality does speaking of which do you see that single ring sitting on that rock there you know it's the kind of little tiny details achieved in these reaper minis that i just don't see anywhere else except on other reaper mini models which we will get to and one of them will be a dragon just like this, except much, much bigger. But that's all the time we have in today's video. Overall, I think Dungeon Dwellers was a good Dungeon Master's first starter set. For about a dollar a pop, I can't complain much about these minis, nor would I want to. Calculating the average scores, this set gets a 10 out of 12 for me. It's a great value starter box with a few standouts. What do you think? Do you have a favorite mini? Are you Team Owlbear or Team Treasure Dragon? Let me know in the comments down below. And remember, the Pledge Manager 5.5 is closing soon. Do not miss out on this set or any of the others if you are wanting them. You can check out the link in the description for more information. While you're down there, Go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out and helps the channel grow. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. And let's go paint some minis.